welcome in everyone to our Crack Rackets coverage of a little midweek college tennis action. We have SMU hosting Old Dominion. We are so thrilled to be joined here at the start of our broadcast by the head coach of the SMU men's tennis team. Welcome back onto our Crack Rackets platform, head coach Grant Chen. Coach, first of all, thank you for inviting us to cover today's match. Let's just ask more broadly, how are you and the feel, uh, team feeling today? First off, thanks for having us, Gruskin. It's it's so good to see you guys, some familiar faces. I get to hear your very soothing voice all season long, and to have a conversation with you is so much fun. Uh, today, I think it's going to be special. It's going to be great. Um, we have a longstanding history with Old Dominion as well, and beyond that, uh, both Dominic and I have known each other since the good old UCLA Baylor days, and you know, countless number of four three matches. You know, we've won one, we've won some, we've lost some, but. Uh, today will be fun. They're on their spring break, so they've been here for a couple days um, and spending a few days in, in Texas. And us, same thing. We're, we got a series of matches this week, so it'll be a nice stretch to be back at home, especially after being on the road most of February as uh, we you know, broke down the Dallas Open setup to, to get ready for college tennis again. Mm -hmm. And a lot there to, that I want to follow up on. First of all, it's a testament to you guys, Dallas, the facility you've built. You're a spring break destination. That has to be a good thing uh, about your program. But, you know, looking for your guys, certainly you're coming off of a year where you guys were 22-7. and seven. You go undefeated in conference play. You make the NCAA tournament. This year, a little bit of a slower start. Six and six overall coming into today. And I was looking at today's rankings. I couldn't believe you guys weren't top 75. But obviously, I'm sure that's something you, your team is aware of. You know, that said, talk to me about the state of the guys entering today's match. How you're feeling with conference play on the horizon. Sure. Well, look, it's, it's exciting. I mean, what I think shows the most is the tremendous parity in in college tennis you know teams ranked you know 50 spots apart could any anything can happen on any given day you know I'll use Mississippi as an example we played them nine days ago at the time they weren't ranked they go on you know they beat us in a very close competitive four-hour match then they beat um, Mississippi State you know they follow up and now they're I believe in the 30s or whatever it is so I think what it really shows is the is the parity uh, you know, on, on paper, ironically enough, it, it, in some ways, I feel like we're stronger than we were last year. But also, I think our schedule has been stronger and tougher, and we've been challenged as well. So we're definitely battle tested. You know, we've had a couple weeks, three straight Sundays on the road when we played um, Middle Tennessee, we played Ole Miss. And then this past weekend, we went up to Stillwater to see our buddies uh, up there, DT and Marty. Uh, but it's been a, a good season. It's been competitive. Yes, on paper, we've had a couple tough losses. And when you put that in perspective, I mean, TCU, who's number one in the country, kickoff, we had two, four, three losses, and then a couple this past week. So, uh, but, you know, we're moving forward, a lot of outdoor tennis ahead of us, conference plays ahead of us. So, you know, the guys are hungry and excited. Mm -hmm. No, I'm happy to hear that. And to your point, I say six and six overall, three of them, four, three losses. And, you know, again, we all know those matches, absolute toss ups. And, you know, now again, with conference play on the horizon, you've got a lot of guys on the roster this year. And obviously you've had the opportunity to play a bunch of them throughout the course of this season. Do you feel like you have a clearer picture of who the six should be moving forward or should we expect yeah. continued experimentation? You know, I, I think the, the core group is there. I think our big question mark the last couple of weeks uh, really was the, was the order. Who is in what spot and this and that. And, you know, there's so many different variables. As you know, at kickoff, we were outdoors in Gainesville. Um, you know, Liam, quite honestly, had a little bit slower start in January. And it was for a combination of reasons. And, you know, I think he's really finding his groove. So, I you know, he played two last season at the end. And I think, you know, honestly, he'll – him and Adam – will be up there as well. Adam has had a tremendous year. I mean, so proud of the work that he's done. He had a great win last week on the road against Nico Slavic. He had an absolute war dogfight against his best friend and our good friend, Tyler Zink. But, you know, really a lot of great tennis ahead. And, and I think things are th starting to settle down. You know, sometimes you're not exactly sure how the cookie crumbles. Um, I really felt our four guys up top, Tony, Crawl, uh, Pranav, and, um, Adam, we're all so close. And so you kind of sometimes roll the dice. And then that next group behind them, I think they were all so close as well. So kind of figuring out the, a couple combinations and how you work in a Jack Winkler who has had such a remarkable journey in college tennis and to be at uh, Michigan State and all that he's done and all that he's brought to the court and, and to college sports and what he's done and made an impact in us 
and just kind of finding that niche. And, you know, I think that's what we've seen with college tennis the last couple of years with some of these grad students is just how you put all these kind of pieces of the puzzle together, um, you know, with a few guys who are one and done. Mm -hmm. Last two questions for you, because I know you want to get out to your team doubles today. You've gone through nine different pairings so far this season. How are you feeling about the point? How important will it be today for your team? Yeah, no, look, it, it doubles is always, I think, you know, you, you you look back three hours from now and you kind of feel like, okay, you know, what happened and was it the swing point and this and that, um, you know, old DU is very, very strong in doubles. We're very excited and looking for a, a great test with them. Um, I think we're all there, truthfully. I think it's just kind of getting over that, that finish line and, you know, we're on the one yard marker and we're just got to push in the end zone. So the guys are kind of getting to that point and, and, on a side note, obviously, just kind of juggling a few things. Jack got hurt against Ole Miss. Um, really was was a, a difficult moment. He got hit in the back of the head with the serve. He was doing eye formation. So um, he's fine now. Nine days later, he's okay. So he won't play today. But, you know, we're hoping that the rest of the spring he's going to be A-OK. No, I'm glad to hear it. Well, with all that said, again, you talked early. ATP event in Dallas. Dallas tennis community, Texas tennis in general. You had the Austin WTA roaring last week as well. What can we expect from the community today? What can we expect from your guys? Yeah, look, I mean, Dallas loves their tennis. Uh, today being a Tuesday match might be a little tricky as everyone's, you know, probably working. But, you know, we love our fans. We love this community and we're, we're thrilled to be here. So, uh, Alex, thank you. We'll see you on the coverage. We'll have a couple guys hop in. Dominic is going to tag team. So he's hopping in right now. Perfect. I appreciate it, Coach. Good luck to you today. Thanks, guys. Of course, Grant Chen, head coach of the SMU men's tennis team. But now we are joined by a first-time guest here on our Crack Rackets platform. Welcome, Old Dominion men's tennis head coach, Dominic Mueller. Coach, welcome to today's uh, broadcast, obviously, uh, for your group today. You're on the road, little spring break trip. How are you and the guys feeling at this point of the year? Yeah, we're feeling good. I think, you know, halfway through the season, I think you have a pretty good idea um, where you stand. Um, I think it's honestly, it's a tremendous group. We have so much fun. Like last night we went to a Dallas Stars game. So I think the mood is great. Um, we just, I think overall haven't done enough to put, put the results on the court so far this year. And, um, but again, the mood and the, the atmosphere around the team honestly has never been better. Mm-hmm. No, I'm glad to hear it. And, you know, your group eight and five overall yeah. conference play on the horizon, you have a bunch of returners to your team yeah. this season. I'm curious how that has made your experience. You know, again, is it a little bit easier when the guys know what to expect throughout the course of the year? You know, it's interesting. It's an um, unusual big roster for us. Um, big part is that extra COVID year. Yeah, that made all these guys getting that extra year. And um, it's been a little bit of a challenge, honestly. Uh, you know, so far, ideal roster for me is always eight guys and having 10 guys. So, there's been, honestly, we've never had more depth. And I think that actually created some challenges. Yeah, the guys feeling more lineup pressure than they ever have before. So I think it's even a new experience for all these upperclassmen because they never felt that much lineup pressure. And I think, unfortunately, you see that in, in our results this year. And uh, But they're, you know, they they got to they gotta be okay with that. They're old enough. They've played enough. And yeah, we got to turn that around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, to your point again, I know eight and five overall, but, you know, right now looking at today's rankings, you guys are number 54. You're right in that NCAA tournament conversation. Of course, conference play still on the horizon as well. These are your final two matches before non-conference play. How important is this week? What do you want to see for from your guys? Yeah, you know, I think I think we're really trying to take it one match at a time. You know, everybody says that, but I think at this stage it's really important. And then, as you said, if you I mean, if you look at our record, if you look at our ranking, I think we are right where we want to be at this time of the year. And I think if you sort of take, you know, sort of like the next tier, of course, like the can Conference USA teams, Sun Belt teams, Mountain West teams, I, I would argue after Middle Tennessee, we're probably have the strongest schedule in the country. And I think that also puts it into perspective. Yeah, I don't think we've really taken any bad losses. And we're challenged. And, and yeah, I think, as you said, we're having really two more high-quality teams with SMU and UTSA that, number one, will prepare us for the conference stretch, but also gives us tremendous opportunity to maybe make some noise in the rankings before we start conference play. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I want to give you a chance to go chat with your team before the match begins. So my sure. last question for you, um, I always like looking at this. Nine doubles pairings so far for your season. First of all, bravo, nine pairings through eight weeks. That's just impressive. Um, But how, you know, how important is that doubles point today? Where do you feel your team is at right now doubles wise? 
Uh, I think we're uh, like yesterday was the best doubles point we've played all year. Um, I think we really found our pairings, and now I think from this point on, it's really just giving them reps and and trusting them and say, hey, I give you the keys from now on, and you just got to ride that bus. Mm -hmm. um, but truthfully, I actually talked with my assistant before this trip, and I looked at our results. And sure, you can always make the argument about momentum, winning or losing, but we only had one dual match so far where it came down to the doubles point, where it was a 4-3 match where the team won the doubles point. So obviously the doubles point is always big, but if you look at our results, eh, the doubles point didn't really matter in our season so far. Um, so I'm always trying to, to, to say, hey, singles and doubles is a little bit independent. Like, for example, I think we're one of the only teams who switches their uniforms between doubles and singles because we want to really want to send that message to our guys. Hey, even if we win the doubles point, we can still win four singles. And there's, yeah, I don't want to make it too big of a deal in case we lose the doubles point. I love that fun fact, the uniform switch. I'll be watching for it today, Coach, and I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Obviously, wishing you and your team luck today. No, thanks, and thanks for everything you do for college tennis. It's amazing. Yeah, of course. We'll have to, we, you know what? I'm reserving the right to have an extended chat. We, that's, we, we've got one in our Sounds future, good. Coach. Yeah, I appreciate it. I love it. it. I love it. Yes, of course. But good luck to you and your team today. And with that said, of course, that will do it for our pre-match coverage. We'll be back in about appreciate 10 it. minutes to start it all. Coach, yes, I appreciate Thank it. You. and. Of course, yes. Take care. And everyone tuning in again, we will be back in about 10 minutes with the start. SMU taking on Old Dominion. We're excited. A little Tuesday tennis here at Crack Rack.
Welcome back in, everyone, to our Crack Rackets coverage of a little midweek college tennis action. Of course, the scene of today's match, the Stieslinger Altic Tennis Complex on the campus of Southern Methodist University. It's SMU, 6-6 six and six overall in the year, outside the top 75 right now. They're taking on the number 54 Old Dominion. Old Dominion on its spring break trip, 8-5. At about the halfway mark of the season. Got a battle with all sorts of NCAA tournament implications on our hands today. As we kick off our coverage here at the number one doubles position. Here at the number one spot. It'll be Adam Neff, Pranav Kumar for this SMU team. Kumar, the fifth year. Transferred over from Texas A&M. Neff, the junior. Bradenton, Florida. <laughs> Neff Kumar taking on the duo of Lalami and Perez. Jonas Lalami, the junior. Casablanca, Morocco. Brandon Perez, Sr. Transfer from Nebraska. Assess a new pairing. Neff Kumar. 3-3 three and three overall. In dual match play so far this season. Lamy and Perez, two and four. So again, both of these teams right around 500 in doubles play. They both have struggled. So it's an opening hold for SMU on court number one. Again, Neff Kumar at this top spot for the Mustangs. We'll head over to court number two now. Here, we go, Here at the number two spot. On your side of your screen, it's Silman and Steinhausen. Silman, the redshirt junior out of Manhattan Beach, California. Julian Steinhausen, redshirt junior out of LA. So it's an opening hold on court number two. No scoreboards active at the moment. We apologize for that. As soon as those get up and running, obviously, we'll try to have them for you. We'll go over to court number three now as we complete again our introductions. Should have said on court number two there. For Old Dominion, Luca Maldonna, the senior. Maldonna. Partnered. Jacob Cadeno, Cadeno the junior out of Germany. That's court number two. Here on court number three, on the near side for SMU. Duo of Kral, Munez Hidalgo, Liam Kral the junior. Bronxville, New York. Munoz Hidalgo, the fifth year, coming over from University of South Florida.
apologies as we look here again opening games in the books on all three courts opening holds for smu on one and two opening hold for old dominion here on court number three For Old Dominion here on court number three. Francois Latalic, senior. Coming over from Mississippi College. Partnered with Cosme Roland de Ravel, the freshman from France. Again, we just talked to Coach Dominic Muller in his seventh year now. At the helm of Old Dominion. He's played nine different doubles teams. He said, though, he feels really good about the pairings he has. This duo in particular, Latalic, Roland Durample, 6-0 and overall on the year. It's worth noting, I mentioned this SMU team, unranked 6-6 six and six overall. They are 6-0 at home. 0-4 when they've gone on the road. Bunch of different 4-3 losses. 6-0 whenever they've played here on campus in Dallas. And you see why. Big serve, big overhead does the job. Let's go back to the three box. Put court one in the center. We'll keep two and three on the side. Again, we're on serve right now everywhere. And was that an opening break for SMU on court number one? Find out in a moment here. At... No, SMU did get a break on two, though. Two love lead for Silman and Steinhausen. Uh, Kumar here serving on the near side, the fifth year. Again, transferred over last season. He in six in singles last year was Kumar. Very good year. there from Kumar again stats available for these teams Neff and Kumar 3-3 three and three overall Silman and Steinhausen 0-1 Crawl and Munoz Hidalgo 6-1 and, and all right we see moves being made on a couple of courts now. Change over on court number one. We've got a score update there. Can we put court two in the big box, please? Yes, we see the scoreboard. We'll try to keep that game score on your screen. Unfortunately, no point by point update. We will have these game scores for you, though. They may be a tad behind. Interesting, again, strength on strength at the number three spot for each team. Two winningest teams on the roster. Vitalik, Roland, Duravo for Old Dominion. Munoz, Hidalgo, and Crawl for SMU. With that, that number three spot. Really toss-ups everywhere. As you do see now, I see play site scoreboards on the courts, Westoff. Surely getting those rolling. Again, SMU up the early two-love break here on court number two. 
Looks like it's three love SMU on court one now. Yes, Neff and Kumar did indeed get the break and consolidate. And it's got to be now. Why not? Moldana and Cotano. It's a duo. What do we know overall on the year? What are the new pairings unveiled by Coach Dominic Muller? Great aggression. ODU gets the break back. 2-1 here on court number two. Let's put one in the big box. Again, it's like slowly but surely scoreboard's getting active. Three love lead for Neff and Kumar here on court number one. How about that leaping overhead? ODU does get the hold, so they're on the board. 3-1 now. clear to me what that scoreboard is on three. It, we do see back on serve two, one on two. So here we go. Now we're rolling. Again, eight and five Old Dominion traveling here to SMU. Alex Gruskin here. So excited our Crack Rackets team gets to show this to you all. SMU team was conference champions last year. They've gotten better in each of the first four seasons under head coach Grant Chen. Hard to be anything but excited about what Chen's been able to build here at SMU. Yes, sir, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Dallas event now on campus. And this team in the top 30 last season. Again, an undefeated conference year. Offer schedule to start this season lost some heartbreakers but again you could see coach Chen in our pre-match interview he says this team's right where he wants them to be certainly right now Neff and Kumar cruise control there's a massive forehand on three as you heard animated groups here right now three that only scoreboard I think is a bit behind these are our up-to-date scores. Well, 3-1 right now on one. Make it 4-1 on one. SMU still up an early break that they've held on to. Let's put court number two back in the center court. We know that scoreboard's accurate. SMU took an early two-love lead. Gets that break back right away now, serving at 1-2. And again, here it's Muldaner, Cadenau. On the fire side for ah. Old Dominion. Cotano, ah. the senior. Thank you, sir. Cotano, the junior. Cotano, six foot seven. So, yeah, we'll know which one's him. Serving on that far side. Again, now 4 1 on court one. That scoreboard will update, don't you worry. Good eye. And worth noting, this team's without Jack Winkler right now. Winkler, the transfer coming over from Michigan State. Head, Durbin doubles. Say he's healthy now. They're just playing it safe. 
By the way, scoreboard's updated online. SMU with leads on all three courts. 2-1 lead for SMU on three. Good poach. Sadly, as you see head coach Grant Chen, a few words for his number two team of Silman and Steinhausen. Meanwhile, Kumar and Neff continuing to find success at the number one spot for the Mustangs. Looks like we have, by the way, a two-all hold on court number two. Here we go, Stang! Did well just to make that forehand. Love the activity at the net there. That might have been another break at one. So let's put court number one on the big screen. I think it's 5 1 SMU, I believe. That was the double fault. Perhaps give the Mustangs the break there. So we'll put this on the big screen. Here, Pranav Kumar serving on the near side. Indeed, 5-1. It was a good leave there from Neff. You see the signal. Looks like they're going body inside. to make a play. It's either set point or 30-15 here, but again, win not if now at this number one spot. So here we go. Match point SMU at one. Lock it in. Rob Kumar, Adam Naff, 6-1 at the number one spot. Good day at the office for the Mustangs. 
And this number one duo now moves to four and three overall in dual match play. So now we got two matches remaining. Scoreboard's a bit behind. Honestly, they're a bit behind online as well. That's accurate on court number two. Three two lead for Old Dominions, Maldonado and Cadeno. I don't know again, the junior, Maldonado, the senior. And Silman and Steinhausen. And in case this is your first college tennis match, SMU winning that set number one, at, or at number one, 6-1. They now just need to win one of these two remaining double sets. Old Dominion needs them both. Whatever yeah. team does win, will take a 1-0 lead heading into our six singles matches. Each of those singles matches worth one point to the overall team score. Best of seven, more broadly. And winner of this one will need to win three of the six singles matches. Loser will need four. And excuse me, 3-2 SMU leads right now. 3-2 SMU. That scoreboard is correct. Sadly, no update for you on that score at number three. Again, right now you see Eldoner serving 2-3 at that two spot. That's a hold, 4-3 all. So we're on serve at two. Well done. Good aggression, standard cross from SMU on courts two and three. Again, it's three all right now on court number two. I believe we're on serve on three as well.
It's a gorgeous lob. Baraka Jr. Jakob Kadano at the number two spot. Now there's a little opening here. Hill Dominion can snack a break at two. Get some momentum going again. Three all right now at that number two spot. Better cross. Love the aggression. They probably left a hair too early, did Mildoner. So now I believe it's a deciding point coming up on two, Westoff. Let's throw that graphic on the screen. And three all deuce at that number two spot. And it goes the way of SMU. 4-3 on serve. Court number two. Meanwhile, long discussion on court number three. I apologize. I missed what it must be about. Not sure what this will do here. So, again, I'd say we just... Yeah, okay. Here we go. Here at this number three position, two winningest teams for the rosters. Metallic, Roland DeRavo for Old Dominion, 6-0 overall. A senior freshman duo, meanwhile, 6-1 here. Mark Crawl, Nunez, Hidalgo. At this number three spot. Something's got to give, right? Strength on strength here. As you see, court number two, four, three, lead for SMU on serve. That's the big man, Cotano, serving on the far side. Well done. Two efficient points on court number two. Serve a volley. Over 70% of points in men's college doubles decided on the first three shots. Serve, return, first volley. We're getting on court three is a little extra extracurricular activity. Too easy. Oh, now we're talking. Red tennis across the board here in this home stretch of the doubles again. 4 3 on serve right now on court number two. Game point chances for Old Dominion. Make it four all. Meanwhile, the scoreboard I see says 3-2 Old Dominion on court number three, but I don't know. Of course, SMU took a 6-1 set, and and Kumar at that number one spot. So they only need one of them. Old Dominion needs both. And Old Dominion gets the hold for four all on two. On serve there. 
Is this a deciding point on three? What's the conversation here? It's that it's raining. All right, rain delay. You see it's starting to sprinkle clearly. Coach Chen did warn us this may be the case, and there was a cloud in the horizon, thought it would be a spritz, nothing more. So we're in a weather delay. In the meantime, we're gonna take you back to the break screen as soon as we have an update. On where things stand, we'll offer that update to you all. Of course, you're watching our Crack Rackets coverage here of SMU taking on Old Dominion. We'll be back with an update in a bit. Was a quick weather delay. Action back underway here on the campus of SMU. Stieslinger Altic Tennis Center. Alex Gruskin here. 6 1 set went to SMU at the number one spot. On serve four all at two. 3 2 ODU at three, but I believe it's a deuce point coming up here. We'll throw that on your screen. Siding point action. Yeah, scoreboard aside, this match at three has been absolutely exceptional. What's the argument here? They're hooting and hollering. It's back and forth. It's 
what college tennis is all about. So the changeover's coming here on court number three. Overall here on two. I love it. Scoreboard up to date. You can see it in the background now. Yeah, so the question is, by the way, is it on serve or is it four? It's 4-3, four, I think, one way or the other on court number three. I'm not sure who's in the lead. Again, 6-1 set for SMU on one, so they only need one of these final two sets. Take a 1-0 lead heading into our six singles matches. ODU 8-5 overall on the year, 54 in the country, right on the precipice of that NCAA tournament cutoff line. For two teams with NCAA aspirations, today's a must. It's a must-have. Will you do me a favor, Westoff? Go full screen on three. I want to see if I can snipe a look at the scoreboard. Yeah, it's not helping. All right, let's go back to the split screen. I tried, folks. I did. Middle solves the riddle. Meanwhile, this has been really high quality tennis on court number two again. For this SMU team, Julian Steinhausen, Kyle Silman, two redshirt juniors. So far this season, duels completed just one match. Owen won overall, came at the number three spot. They're up to two today. Of course. Part of this was worth noting. Grant student Jack Winkler out today, nursing an injury. So Silman Steinhausen looking to fill in the role here at number two, taking on Mel Donner and Cadeno. And here's a window. Or ODU. Chances on court number two now coming up. Oh, look at that poach. Well done. Under pressure. It's a big hold for SMU on three. And okay, it is on serve four all on court number three as well. Scoreboard is updated, so four all on three. We're all on two as well. And five four now on court number two. So we're on serve there. Let's go full screen three. Four all service game underway. Latalik rolling to Ravel on the far side. Take it on. Munoz Hidalgo and Crawl. Munoz Hidalgo, the fifth year transfer. Went over from South Florida. Crawl the junior. Alec the senior, Roland DeRavel the freshman. It's a nice volley at the net. That's not going to do it. Going to try and take that return on the rise. You got to take a full swing. I believe that's Crawl there on that two side. Munoz Hidalgo on the ad. Here on the near side, excuse me, for SMU. And let's go back to the split screen now. Again, 5-4 SMU leads at 1-4 all here on 3. Serving on the near side of your screen. For Old Dominion, Luca Moldoner, senior out of Austria. And 5-4 SMU leads there now on two. Now game point chances for 5-4 for Old Dominion on three. Let's play ball. These are two evenly matched teams. Bunch of returners on this team. Each lost two starters from last year. A lot of depth. 
parity across the lineups here. And now Meltano cruising. Cruising towards five all. Now he's got game point chances. Forty love spot on two for ODU. I believe it's forty fifteen on three. And that's a hold. Five all. Excuse me. Five four. ODU leads at that number three spot. And now it's five all on two. SMU needs one of these sets to take the doubles point. ODU is going to need them both. And for an SMU team that's lost a bunch of 4-3 matches, three of them this season. These are the moments they've been on the wrong side of so far this year. Boy, would they love to flip the script in this doubles point at home. Again, 6-0 and are the Mustangs this year at home. That's really well done, though. And five all now here on court number two after the meltdown or hold. Jugular on court number three. Meanwhile, it's a love 30 opening on two. Here's a chance for Old Dominion. Five four ODU leads right now on the number three court. Five all on court two. Nice response. Now it's break point chances on two. 15-40 spot. Three break point opportunities for Old Dominion to take a 6-5 lead. Again, right now OD with a 5-4 lead at that number three spot. about that now it's a deciding point on two five all deuce interesting who are they gonna go to they go to Cardinal on the that side Wow. 
Old Dominion breaks 6 5 on two. They'll serve for the set. Meanwhile, the battle continues on three. No, it does not. So the scoreboard was behind. What a battle on two. It's not going to matter. SMU takes the set on three. And it's got to be somewhere in the 6-4-7-5 vicinity. But the continued success of this number three doubles pairing. Munez, Hidalgo, and Kral. They take it 6-4. SMU takes a 1-0 lead. Well, okay then. Again, SMU undefeated at home. Looking to get things headed in the right direction. Headed into conference play. They take a 1-0 lead over Old Dominion. Six single matches still to come. We'll have coverage of all of them as our action rolls on here at Crack Rack.
Welcome back, everyone, to our Crank Rackets coverage of a little midweek college tennis action. Alex Gruskin here, SMU at home, 6-6 six and six overall. Undefeated, though, on the year when they play at this Dyslinger all picks tennis complex. They took a 1-0 doubles point, 6-1 win at the number one spot, 6-4 win at number three. Now we get into our six singles matches. This is going to be a fun one. You see, by the way, head coach for Old Dominion, Dominic Muller, told us he has his team change uniforms after the doubles point. Why does he do that? Wants them to think it's a clean slate, a brand new match. It's going to need to be. They're going to need four singles victories. SMU needs three. Now we introduce all of our singles matches here at the number one spot, one of the brightest spots in this SMU lineup here this season, junior Adam Neff. Transferred over from UNC a season ago. Wrong star to Neff's here. He's 5-2 and two overall in dual match play. Neff taking on Jonas Lalami. Lalami the junior from Morocco. Played primarily at the number three spot last season was 10 and eight overall there. This year, Lamy four and six at the number one spot. Certainly feels like a toss up. How about that pass from Neff. Opening service game here. Hopefully they'll get those scoreboards rocking and rolling in a moment like they did with doubles. For now, again, going to introduce all these players. We'll jump between one, two, three, four, five, and six. We are uh, planning to be joined in a moment by redshirt junior Kyle Silman. As soon as we have him, of course, we'll bring him onto our stream. The SMU Richard Jr. Unfinished at that number two spot, obviously, but got a front row seat for the doubles point, so we can ask him about it. Meanwhile, you see it's the opening hold for Neff at the number one spot. Again, Neff Lalami, your battle at the top position. Let's move over to two now. And on court number two, here for SMU, it's the junior Liam Crawl. Crawl, exceptional last year, 18 and three overall, 12 and two at the two spot. Crawl off to a five and four start this season. Crawl taking on Francois Letalic. Talent the senior. Seven and six last season in singles, five and five overall to start this year. Metallic serving on the near side here. Old Dominion rocking the light blue. Dare I say the Manchester City tops. As you see Man U on the far side, SMU in the all red. Hands on the hips early for Francois Metallic. Never something you want to see. Big hitting from Crawl. Yeah. 
All right, put that in the memory bank. Loves that slice wide on the deuce side. Hits it pretty well also. So it's an opening deuce point, deciding point chance. Crawl going to go right back to that ad side. I don't blame him. Opening break for Liam Crawl. How about that? Break on really nice start for the SMU Junior. Let's head over to court number three now. Again, I believe we're going to be joined by Kyle Silman here shortly. In the meantime, we'll go about introducing all the pieces here. Alex Gruskin. On the call, you do see scoreboard is updated here on court number three. That is a sight that is enjoyable to see as it's Cody Van Schalkwick. Sophomore out of Namibia. Leads his team in victory. Seven and three overall on the year is Van Schalkwick. He's taken on the fifth year, Pranav Kumar from Texas, transferred from A&M here to SMU, was excellent in the doubles. As he and Neff partnered for a 6-1 win at the one spot. Kumar 14, uh, excuse me, 16 and 6 overall last year, 4 and 6 in singles to start this dual match season. It's the opening hold, it looks like, though, for one all. Indeed, he does. Oh, but that's the Pranav Kumar we've grown accustomed to seeing. Moves the ball so well into the outer thirds of the court. Uses his speed. Shoot to the spot. And Skull would clearly feel in some pressure to create here early.
It's another early break, this time at the number three position for Pranav Kumar. SMU gets the break. 2-1 lead now at court number three. Let's go back to the three box if we can, Super Producer Daniel Westoff. Let's put four, five, and six on your screen, please. We'll keep four in the big box here. Again, I want to go three box, four, five, and six. As we do that, we're going to bring Kyle Sillman onto our broadcast now. Talk to the redshirt junior about everything that transpired in the doubles point, what we can expect from his team here today. We are joined on the broadcast now by Redshirt Junior Man, who we saw on court during the doubles point. Kyle Silman. Kyle, first of all, well done. Taking the doubles point, 1-0 lead for you and SMU. Yeah. Talk to me about the, the emotion, the ups and downs, what that meant getting for your team to grab that doubles point. Absolutely. I think in college tennis in general, the doubles point is so crucial to set the tone for the rest of the match. And I think that when we saw... Court one, get off to a quick start, and then we had that little rain delay midway through the second and third courts. I think that uh, we picked it up right where we needed to, and we closed it off on three doubles, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, absolutely, and that rain delay, almost a de facto timeout, something you don't get yep. to see often in tennis. What does Coach Chen and say to you? What were the guys saying to each other in that you know little two-minute stretch? Well, I think during that rain delay, I think it's just important to get together with your teammate get tactically what's been working, what hasn't been working throughout the whole set, and then just go from there. And for your team, you know, to that end, 6-6 six and six overall, 6-0 six and oh though at home this season. What is it about playing here at the Steislinger Altic Tennis Complex that has it all clicking? Well, I think it's great that we are a great home team. I think that we love our courts here, both indoor and outdoor. And I think that we're really used to the conditions here, and we're just going to be a tough team to be at home the whole year. Well, you know, to that end, you guys have lost a couple of tough ones this year. 3-4-3 three, three battles. Obviously, you've lost some tough ones on the road in particular. You know, how is this group feeling heading into March, heading into conference play? I know the record may not be what it was last season, but is this group feeling pretty good? Absolutely. I think that we all know what we're capable of. And even though we've had those tough losses, it shows that we're right there. And it will click for us just one of these days. And we're hungry for this next week of a lot of matches and I think for the rest of the season we're going to do particularly well. Mm -hmm. Well in today's matchup in particular I know you want to talk fondly about all of your teammates is there any one match on our broadcast you think this is who we should lock in on get a great week of practice this week whatever it may be you think this is the guy we should be watching. I think the one person that you should definitely tune into is uh, on court four I believe Tony Munez Hildago. Uh, he's He's had a great week of practice, like you said, and he's one of the most entertaining guys on the team to watch for sure with his drop shots. He has a lot of touch. So I think that will be a really fun match to watch. Well, I appreciate you saying that as he is on our center screen right now. And Perfect. Yeah, so, so well said. And, you know, again, I know Coach Chen likes to have a big roster of guys on, uh, on campus. What is it, you know, I'm sure it's very competitive, but what are the perks? What's it like to have, you know, again, 10, 12 plus guys on the team? I think the biggest perk of having just a ton of guys is that off the court, we have the most noise out of anybody in our conference, possibly the nation, with literally 10-plus guys cheering for us at all times. So when we have that behind our backs, I think it just really helps our teammates on court just pump themselves up and stay positive. Mm -hmm. Give me a good Coach Chen story. I mean, talk about positive. I don't think I've ever seen him frown. Yeah, I mean, Coach Ten in general, he always is looking forward, always looking for the next play. So even with these 4-3 losses that we've had, he's always positive and knows that we can do better. And he never gets too stressed out about those losses because, I mean, 4-3 losses are a matter of 
uh, just a few points. Yeah, no, well said. And, you know, again, do you think he'll have a slam on campus by the time you graduate? Because I feel like that's the way things are headed. I mean, the way things are headed wouldn't shock me. I, <laughs> you can never count Grant Chan out of anything. Yeah, well said. Well, again, really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today, Kyle, and obviously wishing you and your team luck, not just here today, but uh, throughout the course of this season. And uh, congrats again on taking that devil's point. Really fun point. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Kyle Sum and everyone joining us here on our broadcast. All right. With that in mind, we will lock back in on the action happening on court and early first set action everywhere. All right, and you see changeovers on two of our courts here. Wanted to finish introducing all the matchups. You heard from Kyle Silman, Antonio Munoz Hidalgo, one of the new pieces. Fifth year coming over from South Florida. Four and four overall in dual match play this season. Off to a 3-2 lead here on court number four. He's taking on the freshman for SMU. It's Cosme Roland de Ravel out of France. Roland de Ravel, six and three overall on the season at this number four spot. Let's watch a game here of number fours. Again, early action everywhere. Just scoreboard updates for you all. Ha is there any definitive separation? Well, Liam crawls up a break three love at the number two spot. That's really the only definitive three plus game separation right now still early everywhere and you see we're on serve here at four oh. I like this kid's wrist I like the arm I like how fluid that was I won't lie it's my first time getting eyes on Roland Duravo but that was impressive Well done. Again, I know we don't have sadly up to date scoreboards for all of you. I can't tell you that big picture. Excuse me, point-by-point point scoreboards, but big picture, 3-2 on serve here on four. That is correct. Like that. This freshman's a little animated. SMU will bring that out of you, as you heard Kyle Silman allude to. They're loud. They epitomize that energy, that spirit college tennis is all about. To be a fun environment for this freshman Roland DeRavel to experience early in his career. But boy, he's got a live arm. Made that look very easy. It's an acceptable miss. It's the right shot. 
It's the right setup. Sprays on him. And by the way, I see in the corner of my eye, I think Lewis Cloud might have a 5-2 lead on 6. So we'll jump there next as he might be serving for that first set. Pretty even everywhere right now. But it's break point chance here, by the way, if you want to throw that on your screen for Duravel. Uh, excuse me, for Munez Hidalgo. That's impressive. And that's the hold. So three all now here on four. Yeah, can we hop over to court six? We're going to get to that battle on five in a moment, I promise. want to introduce everyone. Where's that court number four? Uh, excuse me, court number five. Okay, it's not five. I thought it was going to be a five-love lead here. It is not. So let's go over to court number five quickly, though. You can see Liam Kral's got a five-love lead. So we're going to get there in a second. Court number five right now, Julian Steinhausen. Redshirt junior out of L.A. Steinhausen, nine and six last year. Four and four to start his season this year. He's taking on the junior, Jakob Cadeno. I don't know, six foot seven. Five and five overall this season. Oh. Coach is going to ask about the code violation there. Cotano gets the break 4 4 3, so he'll now lead. Let's go over to court number six quickly introduce that one and then we're going to get to court number two for the set point oh, excuse me for the perhaps final game of the set it's Lewis Cloud here for SMU Cloud sophomore out of San Antonio Texas six and six last year six and three already this season is Cloud he's taken on Jakob Cadeno excuse me yeah he's taken on Jakob Cadeno No, he's taken on Muldoner. Okay. They actually pulled someone from the lineup. I see. Perez was listed at the number five spot. He's out. Cotano did move up to five. It's Muldoner here at six. Muldoner serving down a break. Two, four. Senior. Three and one overall in dual match play this year. Went 11 and four last season playing at the top two spots. But let's go... Th Back to the three box. And let's put two in center screen. Right now, Liam Crawl with a five-love lead at two. We'll put five and six on the sides for now. And look at that. He beat us to the punch. Liam Crawl, six-love opening set. Here on court number two. Dominant start from the junior. First, first set in the book. And how about this? A little Tuesday midday bagel. Why not? That's good stuff from Crawl. Let's put court number one then in the big box. It's a lead for Old Dominion, Lunis Lalami. 4-2 lead at that number one spot. Over Adam Neff. You see the changeover coming. I'm just missing all these spots right now. I apologize, folks. There's again, 1-0 SMU overall as they took the opening doubles point. Go, Tony! See the battles right now on five and six. Let's put court number three in the center screen. I'll keep my eye on one. Nav Kumar taking on Cody Van Schalquick. Again, Van Schalquick, winningest player on this ODU roster. I feel like it's 
got to start with him if they're going to have a comeback effort today. Meanwhile, you see Cloud 5-2 lead on 6. With Crawl already taking a first set 6 love. Pathway begins to emerge for this SMU team who needs three singles victories to secure their seventh win of the season. And actually, let's put court number six on the big screen. We'll just flip that in three. Let's also make court number five, court number one, please, as, again, Lamy, the 5-2 lead now at court number one. So a couple of first sets reaching the finish line. Full hockey swap here. And it's Cloud, sophomore. Surfing on the near side here. That landed good from Muldonner. Certainly looked good. That's just too good from Muldonner. Again, why is Cloud at a number six spot instead of maybe number one? Doesn't quite have that elite weapon to hit through the court, but boy, he moved the ball well. It's just better tennis from Muldonner. Gonna stay alive here in set number one again. First set in the books on court two, six love. For us, I'm using Liam Crawl.
So you do see Muldana extending the set for 3-5. Looks like Neff's managed to do the same on court number one. You see scoreboards updated. Indeed, both Neff and Aldonor did break to extend their sets. Three, by the way, still on serve on court number three. Let's make that court four, please. Lamy at one, just casually. Meanwhile, Montana continuing to stay alive in this opening set. As are Neff, they're just doing enough. Still just one first set in the books. Unless that opening set just went to the lobby. Not sure what happened there on one. Oh, we missed the first set. 6-3 on court number five. It goes to Jakob Cardano. So Old Dominion does move. Get a set on the board. Meanwhile, again, deciding point, set point here on court number six. Sophomore Luis Cloud. I don't know why I say Luis. Luis Cloud. Yeah. Opportunity to secure a second first set for the Mustangs.
Sales on him. By four. Let's move Cloud for the moment. We're going to keep... Let's move Cloud onto the side, please. With one and six. Let's flip one and six. As right now, Jonas Lalami serving for the opening set. On court number one. We'll put six on the side. And we'll replace court number one on the side with court number three, please. Again, Jonas Lalami here. Junior out of Monaco. Ten and eight last season. Played primarily at the number three spot. Served for it at 5-2. Was broken by Neff. sail long off his racket. Looks like it might have. Go for it, man. Here we Again, Cloud going to serve for a second first set for SMU. Right now, SMU took the first set. Six love. Liam Crawl at the number two spot. He's up six love, two love already. Meanwhile, Jakob Cotino is 6-3. Set for the Old Dominion Junior. At the number five spot. And now that's a set for uh, Old Dominion at number one. Yusuf Lalami, 6-4. He takes the top spot. Let's put six back on the big screen. Let's put court number four in its place on the side. Three first sets remaining. Two right now for Old Dominion. One for SMU, of course. Old Dominion going to need to win four singles matches. After dropping the doubles point, SMU only needs three. Right now this match is still anyone's to grab. See right now, Munez Hidalgo, the 5-4 lead on serve at that number four spot. Looks like we're on serve four all at three as well. But this is when you remember, Munez Hidalgo is a fifth year transfer from the University of South Florida. Roland Duravel, the freshman for Old Dominion. Again, given the age gap, maybe that's a spot you really look to attack if you're SMU here today. Cloud, meanwhile, was a 5-2 here in this opening set. Can't afford to let this one escape. Just rip the ball. That's the first set, it looks like. It belongs to Lewis Cloud. That's huge. So now it's two first sets apiece. And let's put court number four in the big screen. Let's replace that with court number two on the side. Haven't checked much of Liam Crawl. It's because he's been racing off to lead, so we'll keep him on the side of your screen for a little bit. Meanwhile, again, it's the freshman, Hosme Roland Duravo, serving 4-5 here, set number one. Two first sets for each of these teams now. We're in a critical inflection point in this match.
By the way, you see now for Crawl, six love, three love. Come on now. And the first sets on courts two and six. Go to SMU one and five to Old Dominion. First set still going on three and four. Flat was called, ball rolling behind. Explosive. That is one heck of a hold from the freshman, Roland Duravel on four. So let's put three on the big screen. Let's switch three and four. Kumar serving to stay in the set. Taking on Ben Schalkwick. spot. This might be a set point here for Van Skulkwood. He might have had two. There's a deciding point opportunity. And it looks to go the way of Kumar. So he just hold four, five all. No, he did not. That ball getting hit back his way. Again, apologies, no point by point updates here. As you do see the changeover on two, Liam Crawl in cruise control. All right, maybe this is the deciding point now coming up. Okay. Joke. What a joke from Kumar to hold for five all. Really well done. By the fifth year, as you see, 60414. Let's, let's, uh, excuse me, for crawl, let's replace three and four again. It's five all now on three. Already five all at this number four spot. Final two first sets. And so you got first sets at two and six. Or Dominion at one and five. Let's go, Tony! 
line. So the fifth year, Munoz Hidalgo. Closing in on a 6-5 lead. And again, you've seen how explosive the serve forehand combination is for Roland Duravo here. How does Munoz Hidalgo go about breaking this freshman's rhythm? Hidalgo. Elite ball movement there. And that's one way to get Roland De Ravel off the spot. Attack that inside out, but then make him sprint. Full sprint. Fine. You want to hit a forehand? I'm going short angle, though. Moving you around the court. Very well done by this fifth year. Promised to us by Kyle Stillman earlier said keep an eye on Antonio Munez Hidalgo. As creative, as entertaining of a player as we have on our roster, you see why 6-5 hold. Munez Hidalgo on serve. He leads for SMU on four. Let's put three now back on the big screen. Meanwhile, Liam Crawl. Is that a break or a hold? He's either serving for it or up 6-0-4-2. Second stats starting to get underway everywhere. Cody Ben Schultz serving on the near side here for Old Dominion. Sophomore out of Namibia. 10 and 8 last season. Leads the team with seven victories here this year. A little Karatsevi on that serve forehand technique. It's big. He's broken, so now Kumar will serve for the set. That would be a third first set. Let's put Crawl in the big screen. Move court three to the side. Liam Crawls look exceptional today. And again, there are so many talented juniors. You think about the Virginia Four, Rodesh, Montez, Von der Schulenberg, Kiefer, Micah Braswell, Gustav Strom. Countless others I'm sure I'm forgetting, but Liam Crawl belongs in that conversation. So good for these SMU Mustangs during his time on campus. Slow start to his 2022 season again last year. Crawl a ridiculous 16 and 18 and three, excuse me, in conference play. Already has four dual match losses this year. Rocking and rolling once again. Meanwhile, again, Kumar serving for the first set, 6 5 on three. Munez Hidalgo up, it, but on serve, 6 5 for SMU on four. You feel like SMU, again, a good five minutes here. Now they're in a commanding position.
said it before, Liam Whoa. Crawl might be the most underrated player in all of college tennis. It's not hyperbole, that's fact. Six love, five two, Crawl now leads here on court number two. Let's move him to the side, put Kumar in the big box, please. Pranav Kumar on court number three, serving for the set. And I believe head coach Grant Chen has migrated this way over to court number three now. Is that him? See if we get a better angle here. I believe it's set point coming up here for Kumar. Great ball, though. Great depth down the center. First set belongs to Pranav Kumar. So we'll put four on the big screen. We'll replace that side court with court number five, please. A place we have not spent a lot of time. Yakukata no taking the first set there. Poor Old Dominion. But that's now doubles and three first sets in singles. They get two, they get three, they get court six. Meanwhile, freshman, again, for this Old Dominion team. Cosme Roland de Ravel, he has my attention. He should have yours as well, college tennis fans. That shoulder, again, that ability to slingshot through the serve, the forehand, that's just a weapon, no doubt about it. Meanwhile, you see again, Crawl closing in on the finish line. Four first sets for SMU. The fifth year Antonio Munoz Hidalgo. Seven five set at the number four spot. All right, now SMU is in command. Looking to sustain their undefeated start at home. Six and zero overall here in this 2023 season. All right, let's put court number two in the big box. We'll replace it with court one on the side. Again, the two first sets SMU, uh, Old DU. Old Dominion, excuse me, was able to capture the number one and five spots. Here, though, again, Liam Crawl is closing in on the finish line. And on Francois Letalic. Senior here serving on the near side for Old Dominion. I believe it's a deciding point match point here, Westoff. Throw the graphic on your screen. Crawl sails it. 
And so now he'll serve for the match. 5-3 lead here for Liam Kral. Here we go, Liam. Make it best SMU. 2-0 lead, and again, SMU earns first sets now. Courts one, excuse me, courts two, three, four, and six. Lewis Cloud R.A. is setting a break lead on six. And this first set's just wrapped up on three and four. But advantage SMU. In large part because of Liam Kral. Helped earn the clinching doubles victory at the number three position earlier today. Now three points away from the finish line. all Liam Crawl. There, just about the only thing that slowed him up. As you do see, by the way, it's been a great day for Jakob Kanano. Kanano, the junior. Got really good doubles at that number two spot. Set and 3 2 up for Old Dominion at five. That's definitely a piece moving forward. And Milani in a battle right now with Neff at that number one spot. Not out of it quite yet. Sticking around here. Can he at least force maybe one more service game here for Crawl? Yeah, I think that was a double. I'm fairly certain that's a break. No, not quite yet. All right. Again, Liam Crawl here. Six love, five three. In jeopardy. And the break back. And it's back to back double fault. Wow. So Letalic does stay alive. Five four now on serve here on court number two. We'll move that to the side. We'll replace court number one with court number two. In fact, we can just do a little flip-flop there. Again, worth noting, was a set and a break lead for SMU at court number six. Again, from 6-love, 5-2, though, now back on serve. 6-love, 5-4 at that number two spot. 
Yeah, the Old Dominion push has to start now. They lose a doubles point, drop four first sets in singles. Gotta be now. You gotta protect some of these leads as well as Jonas Lalami serving. Set on serve here in set two. It's a nice drop shot. But all right, let's put court two back in the big screen again. See if Francois Latalic can indeed extend this match. Alex Gruskin here. Who doesn't love a little midweek D1 action? An unranked SMU team, six and six overall on the season. Taking on eight and five and number 54. Old Dominion here. Conference play on the horizon for each of these teams. Five all now, match extended here on court number two. Can we make court five, court six, please?
up again. Serving now, he was up 5-2, it's now 5-all here in set number two. Wound up a set and a break, serving 3-2 on six. Again, four first sets for SMU, of course, two, three, four, and six. ODU staging a little bit of a comeback here. Wow. What a turnaround. Again, can Liam Crawl refine his rhythm? Right now, Francois Italic has him on the ropes. Here in set number two, on court number two. Let's swap out courts number one and two. Again, I want to stick with these courts here for a little longer. serve here in set number two. As you do see, Latalik is now serving for the set on two. What an unbelievable turnaround. Now again, will it ultimately matter? That's the question as ODU did scrap out those four first sets and Kumar's now up a set and a break on three. Pathway to victory still exists with three straight sets. Victories for this SMU team. But man, Latalik is making things complicated. He's three points away from the second set after being 5-2 down. As you see, Lalami holds 4-4 four, four all here on one. It's just a testament, again, what Francis Latalik is doing. Francois Latalik just staying alive your other teammates opportunities to make pushes putting the freaking ball in play just making them earn it
Let's go, Crawl. That's a second set for Francois Letalic. I cannot believe it. Five straight games for the Old Dominion senior. We play on on two. Let's make court two, court five, please. So now the question is, can Old Dominion close out a couple of straight set matches? Maybe take a 2-1 lead, put some scoreboard pressure on. Although, again, you see the set in the break lead for Cloud on six. Setting a break again for Kumar on three as well. But now you see Kadano. Actually, can we make court five the big screen? Kadano serving for the match. Boy, oh boy. You thought it might be 2-0 SMU for a little bit. It might be 1-all now for a while. All right, unclear what happened there. Apologies. Again, it's the junior, Yanka Kodno, serving at the match here. And Julian Steinhausen. It wide. Meanwhile, let's make court number one. Guys, uh, let's stay on court one actually. Okay. Ending scenes. Meanwhile, how about this? Cloud in a commanding position now. Break point chances here to make it six, four, five, two on six. And that's the match. For Jakob Kadenau, 6-3, 6-3. He takes it at the number five spot. One all overall. Big win for the ODU big man. Okay, win number six for him overall on the year. So let's put court six in the big screen. Make court six, court three on the side. I believe now a deuce point, deciding point coming up here on six. Cloud a chance for a 5-2 lead. That return miss, it looks like it must have, given the roar we heard from Maldonado. So I'm going to say 6 4 4 3 here on 6. We'll wait for the scoreboard to confirm. Let's put 3 on the big screen, though. Pranav Kumar, he got the message. My teammates might be struggling elsewhere. It's time for me to step up. We'll put 6 on the side, by the way. And Adam Neff force a third set. SMU teams had a ton of chances. Liam Crawl was up a set in 5-2.
he then drops five consecutive games. So Francois Letalic extends things at that number two spot. For what it's worth, Antonio Munez Hidalgo for SMU is now up a set and a break at four. That's the perks of winning those four first sets in singles for SMU. The broad pathway. Vince Galwick gets on the board 4-1-4 here in set number two. But let's go over to court number court number four, please, here on this big screen. As again, you see Lewis Cloud. He's up a set and a break on six. We're just catch catching changeovers everywhere. I guess let's put one on the big screen, move four to the side. And let's replace court one on the side, please, with court three, actually. Let's go, Let's go. Mar serving now up for one. Four three indeed it was the Meldonner hold on six as expected. Or as we thought we observed. But still setting a break lead now. Again for SMU still on courts three, four, and six. So even despite Crawl dropping the five consecutive games to drop the second set, the clear cut pathway is still there for SMU. By the way, this match ending at the clinch. As Old Dominion's gotta hit the road, they take on UTSA. They've got plenty of tennis still ahead of them on their spring break trip. Again, 8-5, and five, number 54 right now is this Old Dominion team. SMU's unranked. Both these teams kind of need this one. As we head towards the home stretch, ooh, now setting a double break lead, setting 4-1 lead for SMU at the number four spot. Cloud's the one you watch. You feel like if Cloud can get off the court in straight sets now, all of a sudden, it's a brand new ball game. Meanwhile, let's put court number three on the big screen. Let's replace court number three on the side with court four, please. Here's the SMU pathway to victory. Setting a break lead on six. Setting a break lead on three. Actually, it might be setting a double break lead on three. So that was nice from Van Skullwick. And then you see, again, 7-5-4-1 on court four as well. So this is the path. SMU can be off the court in 15 minutes or an hour. All comes down to how they protect these leads. It's always nice to have a couple of fifth years in this position as well, which they do in Munoz, Hidalgo, and Kumar. missed it wide. So 
All right, the name of the game right now, SMU building leads, unable to get over the finish line. That's a break for Van Skullwick. Still 7542. Still the single break lead. But yeah, now it's setting a single break on these three courts. Meanwhile, now Cloud's one game away. He holds four, five, three. So let's swap courts three and six, please. Put Cloud on the big screen here. Set in the five, three lead here for Lewis Cloud, the sophomore. Antonio, Texas. Meanwhile, it might now be a set in 5-1 on 4. I apologize, I missed it. That might have been a definitive break as well. I'm waiting for the scoreboard to update. That's big picture what you want to be seeing. Again, from a guy who played primarily at the number one spot last year for this ODU team, clearly working his confidence back up. By the way, Adam Neff took the second set 6-4 over Lolami, so uh, split sets on courts one and two. Again, will that matter? It is a set in 5-1 right now on court four. Setting 5-3 here on 6. Oh, the tweener attempt. That's how you know things have gone astray. Let's... After this point, Westoff, can we swap 6 and 4? Yeah, let's swap 6 and 4. Cloud's a game away. Munoz Hidalgo's a game away, but Munoz Hidalgo's serving for it. Don't want to miss that. As again, these are your three if you're SMU. Three, four, and six. Get you off the court in the next 10 minutes. It's much better from the freshman. Roland Garavo looking to stay alive. Meanwhile, again, you see Pranav Kumar on court number three. He was up 7-5-4-1. Is it 5-2 or 4-3? We'll see in a second here. Five two Kumar. He's serving for it. All right, so here we go. Again, set and five on three courts for SMU. Muldaner holds. Cloud's going to serve for it. Up six four five four on court number six. So we'll hold there in the meantime as Nunez Hidalgo serving for the match. The fifth year transferring from USF. Four and four overall on the season. 
make it five and four. Seven, five, six, one. SMU takes it at the number four spot. So now two, one overall via the Munez Hidalgo victory. Here we go full on three in the meantime. Actually, if you want to go back to the three box, let's put three in the big screen. Let's put courts one and six on the side. Or two and six, excuse me, two and six on the side. Apologies. I should have waited for the Kumar point. That's on me. Again, we're putting court three on the big screen here. Rob Kumar serving for the match. Sophomore Lewis Cloud going to have the opportunity to do the same. How we got here, SMU taking the doubles point, wins at the one and three spot. Neff and Kumar, Kral and Nunez Hidalgo earning victories. That sails on Kumar. But again, SMU took four first sets, courts two, three, four, and six. SMU with the win already. At the number four spot, Antonio Munoz Hidalgo delivering the victory there at Old Dominion, a win from Jakob Cotano. Three and three at number five. Good day for the junior. I believe it's, again, Kumar's got to be close. Cloud's three points away. Westoff, if you could throw us to a split screen, let's go three and six. Three and six on the split screen. Again, the two matches serving for the sets right now. You see Cloud missing the first serve on your screen. Now we can get right to it. Here we go. This is the match right now for SMU. Kumar does the job. 7-5-6-2, it's 3-1 Mustangs. We can go full on six here. Muldoner doesn't love the call. It doesn't matter. All confirmed. It might be match point here. Freshman Lewis Cloud. Freshman sophomore, excuse me. Boy, Cloud is ready, isn't he? Fired up is this sophomore from San Antonio. Here we go. Cloud, get the Mustangs over the finish line here.
Well, you hear Cloud's ready for it. Match point coming up. There it is. Much needed victory for the SMU Mustangs. They move to 7-0. and Now at home, 4-1 winners over ODU today. Very well done. Find this SMU Mustang team again. Winners of the doubles point. Wins at the one and three spot. Straight set victories, and it's the heart of the lineup. It's three, it's four, it's six. All getting the job done in straight sets. Well done by the Mustangs. I mentioned it unranked before. According to the College Tennis Ranks match calculator, the what-if calculator with this win, SMU should get themselves back up to right around the number 60 range. Old Dominion may fall to right around 63, but SMU's back in the ballgame. They needed it. They got it. Big win at home. 4-1 for the Mustangs. All right, we're waiting to see if we're going to have post-match interviews. We might with Cloud. We might with Coach Chentz. We're not going to shut the stream down yet. We are going to step away for the moment. But again, the big win. SMU. 4-1 at home over Old Dominion. They move to 7-6 and six now overall on the year. Whether we're back or not, we'll have some sort of outro. In the meantime, we're going to step away. Again, you're watching our Cracked Rackets coverage of the 2023 College Tennis season.
All right, welcome back in, everyone. As we wrap our broadcast here today, SMU a 4-1 victory over Old Dominion. We are joined once again by SMU men's tennis head coach, Grant Chen. Coach, congratulations on the victory. How do you think your team performed today? You know, first off, it was good to be back home. You know, we've been on the road for a couple weeks, and, you know, we had a couple tough losses on the road. But I knew we'd been playing some good tennis, just kind of putting it all together. But at home, outdoors, in our backyard, and, you know, always great. Uh, We had – a smaller crowd, obviously, because it's a, a Tuesday midweek match and a little gloomy outside. But the boys fought hard, um, did a great job in doubles and really competed on all six singles courts, which is kind of what we're aiming towards is getting all cylinders firing. You know, we've had we've had spots where, you know, certain guys are playing well and then others maybe had an off day. But today, really, all six guys were fighting on all six courts. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was nice to walk away with a, uh, a couple points. You mentioned in our pre-match conversation, you like to see the energy from your guys. That's something that stood out to me today. Talk to me. Did you see that energy you were looking for? Not just at various points of the match, but I I thought they did a good job of sustaining it from start to finish. Is that fair? Absolutely. You know, the guys, uh, you know, have, have been really competing hard. Like I said, nothing against the last couple of weeks and the matches that we've had. We've just come up a touch short. And, you know, that's kind of the name of the game. You know, a, a 5-2 loss on the road last week to Mississippi you know, with a couple swings away from being a 5-2 win. But, uh, you know, hey, that's why we love sports. That, that's why it's the tiniest of margins. But our guys really competed well and, you know, might not have played the best tennis at times, but I think they competed and fought. And, yes, the energy was there. And, and uh, you know, to have our guys really com- competing out there from start to finish was great. And even when, you know, even Liam in that second set, he you know, he, he looks like he's about to steamroll and be done in the next five minutes and then the tide shifts but you know that's what we're so familiar with but he stayed positive and had we had played this all out you know I know uh, he would have been in good shape in the third set 
Yeah, no, that's the confidence you love to hear. And, you know, again, I do want to ask you because we got the chance to see him for the first time. Talk to me about the fifth year, the transfer you brought in, Antonio Munez Hidalgo. Obviously, he helps get the clinch in uh, doubles. He's there getting that first win off the board in singles as well. What did you see from him today? Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. I mean, he he's such a great student and a student athlete. I've gotten to know him the last couple of years being at South Florida, we competed against him so many times. I mean, some incredible matches with him. He played Liam a couple of years at conference, played Caleb a couple of times last season. In a lot of respects, he's such a well-rounded young man and got to know him for you know a couple of years. And I, and I really felt like it was a right situation for us. And, you know, last couple of weeks, he's not, you know, I wouldn't say the Spanish indoors is what he loves, but, you know, back at home and he found his groove and he competed the right way today. And, you know, I think that was that was the difference and, you know, kind of getting a little momentum after that first set and then really putting um, putting finishing touches in the second. Mm-hmm. You have four matches in the next five days. What does the recovery look like these 24 hours? What are you hoping to see from your guys this week? Yeah, the guys are ready. You know, we, we've been working hard and doing the right things and, you know, obviously taking care of the body is uh, number one. So after this, the guys are cooling down. I've got Lewis next to me who's going to hop on in a second. Uh, but recovery uh, cryotherapy, massage, treatment, all that. Um, and we have a couple hours ahead of us and also get them fueled up. Uh, food is such a big part of, you know, these guys, these guys are burning so many calories that, you know, I feel like 90% of my job is uh, Jimmy <laughs> Johnson and uh, Panera and Olive Garden, but um, we'll get them fed and, and, and ready for another really great team tomorrow and another great team Friday and Sunday and next Wednesday. So uh, it marches the, a great time of the year. And it's like the pinnacle of, uh, what we do. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun because people get to go on the road. So, yeah. but uh, thank you for covering us today. I, I know you're covering a couple of their matches this season, so it's always great to see you and we'll get to see you down the road. But uh, I know you want a couple of words with our clincher today, uh, sophomore, and it's been a lot of fun. And I've been on a lot of his matches uh, all season, but Lewis Cloud, here we go. Yeah, great to have him join. Make sure you get that cryotherapy session as well, Coach. I feel like you need it. You burn those calories out there. I know. Uh, I'm well also, aware. Also, probably get a little Pedialyte and some electrolytes. So, Gruskin, yeah. we'll see you. Crack Rackets, we'll see you down the road. We appreciate it, Coach Chen. And now we get the chance to speak with the clincher, the sophomore, Lewis Cloud. First of all, congratulations to you. Uh, you. Talk to me. It got a little, obviously, tentative there at the end. He was able to make some, you know, play a little bit more aggressive in set two. But ultimately, you get that break. You hold on to it in that second set. What clicked so well for you today? Yeah, um, I was just trying to focus on high first serve percentage, just grinding, just playing my tennis, uh, just having uh, just – making a lot of forehands, just grinding, you know? So, um, I don't know. I just felt really comfortable out there. It was one of our first outdoor matches at home. Um, so I love playing here at home. Um, and I just felt like the conditions were great for me today. So, yeah, no, no doubt about that. You brought your best tennis and I'm curious for you if, you know, coming down the home stretch, you felt that uh, there were a bunch of tight first sets at the ending Uh of those first sets, you know, if you felt, how tight things were in that moment. And I see the big scoreboard right above your court. There's no doubt. Yeah. You got to do a little peeking, you know, what getting those four first sets meant not only to you, but your, your team, but to you personally, just, I mean, do you feel that in the second set knowing, okay, we got a little margin? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, like the first set and a half, I was kind of like peeking over, like, all right, like we're in good shape. And then thing I saw a little bit uh, of matches got a little bit tight. So I was like, you know, I, I just gonna focus on my match. It's like I'm not gonna look at it. It's like the last three games. I didn't even look. I was just focusing on my match. So I think that helped me. Yeah, so. no, no doubt about that. What's Coach Chen saying to you on the sideline as you're trying to, you know, again serve things out there? Yeah, I mean, he's just telling me to stay positive, just trust my game, and just go for it. Um, there's not much to it. Just you know, just we've been putting a lot of practice. You know, just trust our game. So, and you guys are seven and zero at home. The question I ask: Why? What clicks so well whenever you're in Dallas? It's it's actually very funny. So last year we were undefeated on the road, and now now this year we're undefeated at home so far. So I I was joking with the guys yesterday. I was like, man, like we're gonna be undefeated at home this year. Let's make that the goal. So hopefully we can keep it up. I don't know. Yeah, whatever's working, it's working for you guys. And now again, yeah. seven and six. Coach Chen has you busy this week. Four matches coming up over the next five days. You know what does the week look like for you guys, and how how are you and the team feeling at this point of the season? Yeah, I mean, we've had some very tough four threes, very close matches. Um, so we're hungry for those W's, you know. Um, 
we've, we have some high expectations for our season. So we're just looking to get after it. And these next uh, five matches or so are, are a big opportunity for us. So I think we're going to go out and we're going to take care of business because we want to get those W's. So yeah, Absolutely. Well, guess what? You're back on court in less than 24 hours and we're looking That's forward fair. to watching you compete then. So Lewis, congratulations sure. on the clinch today. Congrats you. to you and the team as well. Thank you. Yeah, of course, Lewis Cloud earning the clinching victory at the number six spot. Uh, as you see, that'll do it, though, for our coverage here today of this 2023 little college tennis midweek battle. SMU 4-1 winners over Old Dominion for fantastic Lewis Cloud, Grant Chen, all of us here at Crack Rackets. I'm Alex Gruskin. Our coverage continues tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Time. SMU hosting San Diego. We'll see you all then.